I've started to realise literally no matter what you say, if you say anything, someone's going to have a problem with it and someone's going to attack you. I think it's really hard when we ask, is cancel culture good or bad? I think it has good and bad dimensions. There are different consequences for different people based on their identity and the amount of power that they can access. The implications of cancel culture are not evenly distributed. Cancel culture does operate outside the law. We see every single day outrageous allegations made on social media. If they're based on supposition, they can cause great damage, great unwarranted damage. What cancer culture is probably depends on your politics. So some people would see it as a particular turn in the culture that means that they can no longer express what they feel and think freely. Others simply would just see cancel culture as more access to justice and fairness than has previously been seen in society. Movements like the Me Too movement and the Black Lives Matter movement on social media, those sorts of hashtags have allowed us to have really big conversations and hold powerful people to account, but it's often people from the same political perspective cancelling each other. Cancel culture can be really useful because it can help educate people about issues and topics, but if it stifles debate and creates anxiety and stops people from learning, then it can't be productive. This is just a very modern manifestation of a very ancient or traditional human practice. Cancel culture is kind of like putting people in the stocks, so that's the public humiliation part. And it's also the banishment. You're being sent out of the city walls. You're not allowed to be here anymore. There is a link between the word cancel and the word cancer and the words about incarceration, about imprisoning and removing. So we've had ostracism. We've had the creation of scapegoats. We won't get everyone, but we'll get someone. That woman, we know she's a witch. We'll get her. Just as the tabloid media always liked a good moral panic, so too does social media like extreme views. It likes polarities, it loves emotion. But what's happened with social media, algorithmic automated social media, is it's turbocharged it, it's accelerated it. These platforms claim not to be media companies. They claim just to be tech companies and they do not arbitrate, they do not impose the rules of civil society, of debate in those fora. So they get out of control very quickly. People love drama, social media loves drama and it's so easy to spread it. It's so easy for a single screenshot to all of a sudden like spark this like huge hatred, huge story. The consequences are disproportionate and they tend to be fractured based on the kind of power and social capital that you have or don't have. If you are rich and powerful, you can choose to just say, I'm, I'm just not going to go anywhere. I refuse to be banished for this. There are some people who can say abhorrent things and do abhorrent things and can still run for presidency of the United States, for example. If we think about Andrew Tate, I mean, I wouldn't call what has happened to him cancellation. I would call what has happened to Andrew Tate justice. But I would say the fact that he can continue to have a platform on X or formerly Twitter, for example, and continue to make profit from his online venture, I think that is just an example that cancel culture doesn't distribute justice equally. We see when celebrities are cancelled or powerful people, they can then go to rehab or do a mea culpa. And when you look at these apologies, they're all quite scripted now, and they come across sometimes like a hostage video. They know this is what they have to say to be released, just like a hostage does. And so they will read the script, I'm sorry, this does not reflect who I am anymore, I'm listening, I'm learning, I'm going to do better, it's just tick, 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 tick. 
then they have to go away for about six months and then they can have a quiet, soft, gentle relaunch. I think if you are a contrarian, it can be quite exciting, especially if you're a contrarian on the right, because you have no respect for the left who are trying to cancel you, and perhaps it's even a, a badge of honour. Some people would even say being cancelled brings them new audiences. There are high profile people like JK Rowling, who's been labelled transphobic, and she claims that when she gets cancelled, her book sales increase. I think everyday people who are cancelled, it can be extremely difficult, if not impossible, to recover. The loss of reputation, mental health issues, loss of employment, loss of income, all of those types of issues and many, many more. So where there is unjustified social media attacks, it can be long-term and very damaging. You have the wall of abuse coming at you, but no way really to fight back or stand up for yourself. They have no other option but to metaphysically or quite literally shut up shop and just hope it all blows over. And that can take years. Cancel culture is not just the righteous rage of society correcting a wrong. It can also be, in fact, causing a wrong and a wrong far greater than the crime a person is accused of committing. If people feel they've been unfairly cancelled, they can approach the courts. The ordinary citizen would find that very difficult because, for example, the defamation area is very, very, very expensive. They can approach the social media sites to take it down. But the reality is most of those social media sites are in the United States and no US court will enforce an Australian defamation award. That's very significant and a big limitation on Australians. The nature of social media is such that things can be taken out of context quite easily beyond their intended audience. And I think this results in people being held to account for things that they said within a particular context that doesn't necessarily hold true longer term. There is an interesting new development in that the Federal Attorney General is looking at introducing new legislation called the right to be forgotten. And that means that if there is an argument that material should be taken down, maybe you made a mistake 10 years ago, but you don't want everyone reminded of it when they Google your name, you can apply for that material to be taken down. I think there's a great conceit and arrogance that we've got the world just about right or the views that we're fighting for at the moment are the most right views. And we look at the past and say, those stupid people, how could they be like that? But I think we have to ask ourselves, what are we doing now, all of us, that we think is great and progressive that we may be apologising for one day. The young people are quite anxious about what they post online and they're quite worried that it will be taken out of context and used against them in the future. I'm always really careful about what I have to post on social media, like before I post it, but I don't know, it's, it's hard sometimes because like a lot of people might do something like it's a trend and then only like a few months later you realise that, oh, like that actually wasn't right, but it's something you can do about it. Young people are definitely self-censoring. I think that this isn't necessarily a bad thing. I think that it's good to reflect critically on what we say and do. My concern is when we put so much pressure on young people to be doing and saying the right thing all of the time, they don't have opportunities to be more experimental, to put things out there and learn from their mistakes. And I can say for a fact that who I was two years ago is not who I am today. That's something that I think cancer culture has a problem with, is that we reflect what someone did in the past. And even if it was wrong, we don't allow that person to grow. It's so much energy to also just consistently hate on somebody. If we could blow up social media tomorrow, I think we might lose some of this mob mentality. As long as there is social media, this will exist. Well, look, you'll always get a bit of outrage about things, but I think after a while, it's hard to sustain outrage. But I will say something that seems to be persisting, and that is powerful media corporations punching down and effectively seeking to cancel people. There are two things that I think parents and educators do need to focus on. One is 
critical media literacy. So students understanding what they're seeing and why they're seeing it and how it's trying to position them. And the other thing I think we need to get really firm on is what do we agree on as a culture and a society are our fundamental beliefs and values. And when people undermine those, how do we deal with those instances with compassion and understanding? Putting yourself out there, having an opinion in a very public way can bring you a lot of strife because people are going to ultimately disagree with you. And I think as a society and a culture, we have to move to a place where we allow for learning and growth. If we only change our social mores by cancel culture, which is by terrifying people into silence, we're not changing them internally. Whereas if we could instead try to bring people with us and help them to see why it's wrong to say these racist or sexist things and want to change for themselves as opposed to being frightened of the vicious online mob, that is actually the kind of social change that will stick and has the kind of benefit that I think we want.